Well, let me tell you. It cost Jesus diligently. When Jesus came to this earth, not only did they beat him, I mean, just like last night, Cheryl and I was laying there talking about these things after we'd gone to bed, and I was saying, you know, they even ripped his beard out by the roots. She said, I don't ever remember reading that in the Bible, but it's in there. They reached up, and of course he had a beard, and they reached up and grabbed his beard and just ripped it out. How do you think it would feel if somebody walked up to you and your hair and took a great big pair and just ripped out just a handful of it? And they, that's, they're not satisfied with one handful. Let's get another one. Let's pull them out. I mean, you know, the way they really, really get you is to one hair at a time is not so bad. You can kind of stand one hair at a time. But if you strap somebody down and you take their beard and get a handful of it and start ripping it out and you start pulling the cells loose and the, they start bleeding and everything else, that's painful. But they did that to our Savior. But that's not all they did. They beat him with rods. They beat him with their fist in his face. And then they took him over and strapped him and they beat him a naked body with a cat of nine tails and it wasn't 39 stripes. The Romans did this. They had no limitations on how many times they could hit him. So them demons of hell in those Roman soldiers was trying to kill Jesus, but he wouldn't die. You know, the scripture says he was marred more than any man has ever been marred, and he was unrecognizable as a man. And he did that for you. When's the last time you woke up and said, thank you, Lord, that you, be, you took that beating for me? When's the last time you woke up and said, Lord, I'm so grateful? And then after that, they hung him on that cross, and I can only imagine after he'd been beaten and bruised and his back is a piece of raw hamburger meat and then they throw that big beam over his back on that rare, on that naked meat and makes him carry it all the way to the top of that hill. And then they throw him down on it and drive them big spikes through his hands and his feet. And then they take him and they take that three foot deep hole or four foot deep, whatever it was, and they start up with that cross and they got the end of it stuck there and they pick it up and as it gets up to a certain point, I've done this a many times with a great big corner post and when I get it up and I drop it and it falls down, thud, hits the bottom. I can only think if I was nailed to that post, Keith. I can't even comprehend what that would do to me and how it would hurt me. It jerked his arms out of socket. And still, this is minor. He's still flesh and blood. And then he died. And then they took him down. But when he died, his spirit and his soul goes into the deepest hell to be tormented that the wrath of God would be upon him so that all of the penalties and punishment for every sin for every human being on this earth would be poured out upon him. And when the wrath for all the sins of all mankind was poured out upon the king, Jesus, then the price had been paid. It's now, we're now free. So since he hadn't sinned, death couldn't hold him. And the Father sent the Spirit to resurrect him from the dead. And he came back among breathing men, and he did that for you and me. That's beyond my comprehension. I can't even fathom that. But he did that, and here we have this magnificent gift of freedom in Christ, and many of us will not even wake up in the morning praising the king. We'll wake up grumbling. Never let it once be said among us that we grumble. Help us, Lord, to remember what you did for us.